welcome back to my channel. I hope you're as happy to be here as I am. Uh, as you can probably tell from the title, it's probably why you clicked on this video. <laughs> I will be talking about the irrational fears that we had as children. <laughs> I had a lot of these. <laughs> um, I'm actually getting some ideas from BuzzFeed. I've talked about BuzzFeed before, I believe, I think I have. Um, but I love this app. I love the website. It, it's amazing. So this one is 31 Bizarre Childhood Fears That Will Make You Glad To Be Grown Up. I know I have a few. And I think they're on here. I actually think they are. But, okay. The first one is when I was younger, I thought that if I cut my hair short, vampires would come and suck out all of my blood from my exposed skin on my bare neck. Pretty irrational, but you know. I once overheard my mom telling another mom that when she was a child she feared that an ant that an ant would crawl into her ear and establish a colony in her brain. I think everybody's kind of had that fear. Like a spider would lay eggs in your brain or you know, I, I know I did. Like <laughs> part of it was I had an older brother that would tell me stuff like that. Like I was told when I was younger too if I ate too much water like if I eat the seeds of a watermelon that a watermelon would grow in my belly. So, yeah, like, parents. Parents did this stuff. Parents and siblings. They made these come true. My older brother had a crippling fear of beards. He had nightmares about having one. I distinctly remember one night when he woke up in tears because of a nightmare he had about having a beard. That's different. I used to think there was a secret agent living under my bed with some kind of computer that would send a message to my parents whenever I snuck out of bed at night. A kind of proto-NSA paranoia, if you will, because I always got caught. In hindsight, I think I was just really loud and bad at being sneaky. Probably. <laughs> we had a pool growing up, and my biggest fear was while swimming in the deep end, a plane would fly over and drop a crate that had a shark in it. The crate would then splash down next to me, releasing the shark before it tried to get out of the pool. I ended up swimming in the shallow end a lot. I did that too! I was always so afraid, always, like even when I was like 12 or 13, oh, to go in the deep end of the pool because I seriously thought there was a shark or something that was going to eat me. Like, it could have been the clearest water ever. I was okay to swim in a lake. It didn't bother me as long as I didn't go like where I couldn't touch. But I seriously thought even in a concrete pool, public pool, that there was a shark in it. Like, or killer whale or like I had a dream like that one time. Where it was literally a pool full of killer sharks and, you know, killer whales and stuff. That I was, like, swimming to one end of the pool and to the other. Like, collecting coins. Like, Mario. <laughs> it was weird, but it was an irrational fear. So, I used to have this irrational fear of being buried alive. Too many horror movies, maybe? Who knows? I was also terrified of having dreams of being buried alive. My mom would ease my intense fear by telling me that if I said I don't want to dream about blank before I went to bed I wouldn't dream about it. I don't think burying alive, being buried alive is an irrational fear. Like that's scary. That's some scary stuff. Like <laughs> I mean way back when there were actually people that were buried alive. That's why way back when they actually attached bells to coffins so that if people were alive they could ring the bell and then get dug out. So yeah, <laughs> that's not irrational. I mean, nowadays it's a little harder because we embalm people and everything else, but... Um, I was afraid that someone would put me in a situation where I had to choose which family, me which members of my family lived or died. That's not an irrational one either. I mean, hostage situations and stuff like that happen. You know, especially nowadays. People, people are crazy. I used to live in Texas, and after we did a unit on severe weather in elementary school, became I became insanely afraid of tornadoes. It was somewhat justified since tornadoes happen all the time there. But it got to a point where the second I saw dark clouds or knew there was going to be a thunderstorm, I was certain my house or school was going to be leveled within hours. In Texas, I can see that. Like, that would definitely be a worry in Texas. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm in Indiana. So, I mean, we, we've gotten them originally from Michigan, so we've gotten tornadoes, but Texas is like Tornado Alley. <laughs> like, Tornado Central right there. So, if you live in Texas, I'm not, I'm not saying be scared of tornadoes. I mean, just be cautious, guys. 
Uh, when I was six, my family moved to a new house in my new room, a metal ceiling fan dangled from a creaky rotor. At night, the light from under the door frame conspired with the ceiling fan to cast a shadow on the ceiling that appeared to be a giant scuttling spider. As you might imagine, I became hysterical, a scare, a hysterically afraid of spiders. It got bad to the point where I would scream and cry whenever even a little house spider in the kitchen would be followed by any kind of... Yeah. I'm scared of spiders. I hate them. They're nasty. I've gotten spider bites. My mom and parent, my parents have gotten spider bites that are big and gross and I hate spiders. They're nasty. Um, spiders are not as bad as snakes though. Snakes are... Ugh. Ugh. No. Just no. Okay. One fear I had, which makes no sense, was that I would end up on a TV show like Candid Camera and be humiliated on national TV. I became genuinely depressed thinking about this and once spent a whole week during a family vacation barely talking because I was so scared. Well, I guess, you know, people have been embarrassed to death. So, I mean, that's, it's irrational, obviously. I mean, you're going to be embarrassed, but, you know. Some people embarrass themselves on purpose. I do. Like, I don't really care. Like, whatever. I laugh at myself all the time, so. Um, there was a book of scary stories to tell in the dark. I've read that. If you've read that, comment it below if you've read scary stories to tell in the dark, because I have. That was circulated in my third grade classroom and school library. The black and white illustrations in it are sort of ridiculous and disturbing. Apparently so much that I was traumatized by the sight of them. I used, I usually tried to hang around the encyclopedias and computers during our reading block to the point seeing peers leafing through it. But around Halloween it was so popularly circulated that I actually played sick to stay home from school or as many days as possible. Oh, so he was scared of the book. Oh, yeah. There was some weird dents on my closet door and when the light hit it, I swear it looked like a creepy, tortured face. I strangely became convinced that some old man must have been horribly murdered and his pain visage had somehow frozen into my closet door. I explained this to my parents multiple times until eventually they hung a tapestry up over the door and still was not enough for my apparently deeply neurotic eight-year-old self. Finally, I convinced my dad to take the door off its hinges and put it in the garage where it stayed until we moved ten years later. I've done that. Like, I had, like, creepy shadows and stuff in my room that would look like faces, and I would stay up, like, all hours of the night, like, just staring, staring at the wall because it creeped me out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my cat's creeping me out. I'm reading creepy stuff, and he's peeking around the corner. <laughs> there was a towel that hung on the back of my childhood bedroom door, and with a squinty, dark-looked... Hello, like some marrow from the ring, so periodically I would crumple it up on the floor instead. The fear was probably not actually abated, but I don't know because I have since moved out of my folks' house. I mean, that happens to all of us where there's like creepy things that happen. Like, you know, um, because I own my own house, so when like, even when the fur just kicks on, like it makes me jump a foot. Like, Especially when you're by yourself, like, it, it's, it gets creepy, you know, like, our irrational fears are irrational, but they're still scary. So, you know, especially as kids, we make it even worse, like, because when you're in your head so much, you make it so worse. You make it just so much worse. I took D.A.R.E. in elementary school, where they told us about getting addicted to crack after smoking it only once. From then on, I was terrified that someone would run up to me on the street and put a crack pipe in my mouth and make me smoke it. And then I spend the rest of my life addicted to crack. That's a bit much, but I was obsessed with Drop Dead Fred as a kid. So was I. <laughs> but the scene where Fred cuts Lizzie's hair during the night terrified me. I had really long hair and it was my pride and joy. I was really afraid Drop Dead Fred would cut it off while I was sleeping. So I legit slept holding onto my hair with both hands for about a year. That's a bit irrational. Like... I love Drop Dead Fred too. I love that movie. It's amazing. I used to be terrified of bathtubs with shower curtains. When I was seven, I went over to a friend's house and her older brother tricked us into playing a fun game called Bloody Mary. It turned out one of her brothers was hiding in the shower and grabbed my friend. Lots of screaming ensued. Uh, yeah! For sure, I would be scared. I, I would have the bejesus scared out of me. That's 
Whew. That's bad. <laughs> Whew. Okay. When I was maybe 9 or 10, I saw a PBS documentary about the Iceman mummy they found in the Alps, and I was terrified of him and convinced for some reason that he was going to emerge from the toilet while I was peeing. That's, yeah, that's definitely different. I don't know if anybody else has this fear, but I still to this day have this fear. Like, I see pictures uh, on Facebook of, like, South Carolina where snakes come up through the toilet. I still, to this day, am afraid that I'm going to get bit on the butt when I'm trying to pee. Like, <laughs> or I used to, like, my brother, I, I've, my parents told me stories about this. My brother was scared after he watched the movie It. Uh, the clown movie because he comes out of the drain like my brother wouldn't take a shower or a bath for like weeks like he refused like he cried and screamed and threw a temper tantrum he did not want to take one when i was very young i was insanely afraid of drive-by shootings to the point where whenever cars drove by my house i would duck and cover my head i grew up in the suburbs this fear was based in literally no personal experiences whatsoever yeah that's definitely irrational if you don't live in that kind of neighborhood i mean I was terribly afraid that if I peed in the middle of the night, Freddy Krueger would hear it and come get me. So I tiptoed to the bathroom, I never flushed the toilet after I used it, and then I would rub Max in my room as fast as possible. I did that too growing up. Like, I would be so afraid to get out of my bed because I would be like, somebody, something's going to grab me from underneath my bed or something's in my closet. So I'd like run to the bathroom and like pee really quick, like hover over the toilet so I could like run if I had to. And then, like, watching, watching the drain, make sure nothing's coming out of there. And, then, like, take off back to the bathroom or bedroom, jump in my bed and cover up my head. I did that, too. Um, I would, like, cover up my head so that, like, if they can't see, you know, if I can't see them, they can't see me, you know, ghost or whatever. <sighs> crazy, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Like most kids, I was an avid Goosebumps fan, but one book called Be Careful What You Wish For scared the bejesus out of me. So I'm not the only one that uses that word. I love that word. It's about a girl who makes a wish, but its execution is at the expense of others. Every time I blow out a birthday candle, I still make sure to add a ton of fast mental disclaimers about my wish. <laughs> For a while, I became consumed by fear that I would be falsely accused and then found guilty of murder. I wasn't sure how, as an eight-year-old, would find myself in the wrong place at the wrong time, but I was terrified by the idea that a jury could just decide I had done something that I really didn't do. That's, yeah, I mean, especially, I mean, as a child, not so much, but that's, that's a scary thought. Like, like, I, you know, somebody could really frame you, like, it's happened before. So, I mean, but yeah, um... <laughs> It's not really irrational, but, you know, um, I mean, I had tons of irrational fears growing up. You know, the shark at the bottom of the pool, and, you know, monsters coming to come out of my closet, and the boogeyman, and, you know, um, somebody's gonna grab me under my bed, and, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know, I mean, I think everybody has irrational fears growing up, you know, I... Make sure you leave your comments. Comment below if you have any really weird, irrational fears or just anything. You know, even if you still have them. Or any that you had as a kid. Um, I can remember my little sister was, like, deathly afraid of Santa Claus. Like, every time we went to take her to see Santa Claus, she would scream and scream and scream. I'm like, what is it about Santa that... She grew out of that eventually, but when she was, like, four or five, she, like, refused refuse like we had to force her to sit on his lap he was like deathly afraid of santa <laughs> but love the idea of santa but when actually seeing him she like freaked out freaked out <laughs> screaming bloody murder but but yeah so if you have any irrational fears whether they stem from horror movies watching i know that's kind of where i got mine from i watched horror movies as a kid all the time my favorite movie growing up was Sleepy Hollow. If you've never seen Sleepy Hollow, it's about a headless horseman um, that goes around killing people. And Ichabod Crane is this doctor that tries to figure out who's doing it. And it ends up being this really creepy guy. And yeah. So. And Johnny Depp plays Ichabod Crane. So. You should definitely watch it. And then of course Chucky. I watched Chucky growing up all the time too. So. I'm, I'm definitely a horror movie fan. And I always have been. So I think that stemmed a lot of my irrational fears.
a lot. <laughs> so anyway, I really hope you like this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel so you can see some more awesome videos. Make sure you leave some comments down below of your irrational fears or any irrational fears of your friends. Or if you have any like paranormal stories or anything like that, I love hearing about it. So make sure you leave it down in the comments below. Thanks guys, love ya!